Here's Johnny! <laughs> Hey guys, hope you're going well and welcome back to another Foreign Film Friday. Can you believe that this is the final Foreign Film Friday for 2017? So crazy. I know how much so many of you appreciate my foreign film reviews and I do love sharing with you the very best and latest of foreign film releases and hearing your opinions and discussions and your suggestions for what to review next. We have reviewed so many great uh, movies this year here on the Foreign Film Friday segment, but not everyone finds foreign language movies or non-English speaking movies easy to get into and it can be a daunting experience especially if you don't know where to start. So if that maybe sounds like you, consider this your Foreign Movies 101 or Beginner's Guide to Getting Into Non-English Language Movies. Now before we jump into some of my favorite movie picks, I need to do a quick little intro about why it really is so important to watch these non-English, non-American, non-mainstream, non-Hollywood, non-studio budgeted films. Firstly, it's perspective. Different filmmakers have very different stories to tell and different ways of telling it. If you look outside that safe sphere of English films, you will find an endlessly diverse range of stories that are culturally unique to whatever country they are coming out of, even if they don't necessarily intend to be. Simply by being set in a different geographical location, they'll naturally bring those elements into the story. They'll bring in different outlooks and perspectives on culture, on family life and relationships, and these things could be a world away from what you know. Secondly, it's to diversify. Getting out of your comfort zone is a really great thing, and while it might be challenging at first, like anything, you have to work at it to reap the benefits, but you will get such a better appreciation for movies overall by exposing yourself to different ways of telling stories that don't always follow that same generic formula and structure. So if you are looking to get into foreign movies, here are some great places to start. I've collated a little list of some of my favorite movies from Europe to the Middle East and finishing up in Asia. So let's get started. Number one, and please bear in mind it's in no particular order, like the list that I'm about to tell you, but We'll get started with number one. It is France's 2001 romantic comedy Amelie. This is starring the adorable Audrey Tattoo. This is directed by Jean-Pierre Genet and is about this painfully shy Parisian waitress. She's so sweet, so charming, and she really tries to improve the lives of those around her in like really strange, quirky little ways. It is so charming, this world that Genet has built, so fantastical on the border of absurd, but yeah, it is so, so sweet. And I love the music by Jan Tiersen. It is so lovely. I, every time I hear it, it just makes me so bright and warm. An absolutely gorgeous movie. If you haven't seen a foreign film, this is a great one to start with. Ça va? Un café, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Au revoir. <laughs> and that is the extent of my grade six French. Next up at number two from Spain, this is the fantasy horror film Pan's Labyrinth, directed by the masterful Guillermo del Toro. Set in 1944 amongst the Spanish Civil War, it's really a dark time to set a fairy tale, but that's what makes it so incredible as we follow the story of young Ophelia who meets a fawn. And this fawn tells her that if she can complete these three challenges, that she will be saved from her really like violent and dire home life situation. It is surprisingly very scary. I remember when I first saw it, I was absolutely in awe because it was both brilliant and terrifying at the exact same time. There's one particular scene with a demonic creature who has eyeballs in his hands and he puts these hands up to his face in order to see and it still really creeps me out. Still staying in Europe at number three, we are in Italy for 1997's film Life is Beautiful. Even though this one is set during World War II and during the Nazi occupation, of many European countries and specifically during the Holocaust, it is still classified as a comedy 
believe it or not, it actually is. And that is partly or mainly due to the lead character Guido played by Roberto Benigni so amazingly. He's so upbeat. He's so charismatic despite all the doom and gloom going on around him. He uses his humor in order to get through it. And he continues to use this humor and this positive outlook on life even as he and his young son are being taken away to the concentration camp. I'm gonna tell you, I did cry a lot in this movie, but it is so amazing. And Benini's performance, he went on to win the Best Actor Award at the Oscars. It's marvelous. Next up, we are continuing to move eastward across the globe uh, with Turkey's film Mustang from 2015. This was actually the first film out of Turkey that I think that I had ever seen, and it was absolutely incredible. Mustang is set in a remote Turkish village and follows these five orphaned sisters who are living with an aunt and uncle in a very, very strict and sort of religious closed household basically until they can be married off it's a coming of age story and it is without a doubt the resilience of these sisters and their bonds with each other that makes this movie so incredibly touching it hits really hard at the subservient role of women within this culture and it's probably more about provoking and creating discussion than it is about absolute accuracy. I've heard a lot of people say that this isn't uh, indicative of Turkish culture in this region of the world, but for what it's worth, it is absolutely a film which incites so much discussion and is done really brilliantly. Let's finish this off with number five, a film from Japan. This is the anime Spirited Away from 2001, directed by Hyako Miyazaki. Yes, this is an animated film and you might think it is for children, but trust me, it is just as much for adults as it is for children and also not very small children. It is kind of scary in parts. According to Wikipedia, this film is the second highest grossing animated film of all time. So really, if you haven't seen it, you must. Here, 10 year old Sen somehow stumbles across this magical, fantastical bathhouse, or you would also call it a spa resort, and is trapped there and has to work at the resort or at the bathhouse in order to win her own freedom. It is an absolutely thrilling adventure ride. All the characters that Sen interacts with, Yababa, the evil boss who oversees this bathhouse and won't let Sen go. It is just, it's so magical. I absolutely adore this film. I adore the animation so, so much. And Studio Ghibli went on and made uh, a whole range of these fantastical anime films and I love every single one of them. And Studio Ghibli films like Spirited Away, like Howl's Moving Castle or like Princess Mononoke, they're some of my favorites. They make Disney films feel childish. That is it from me guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite foreign films and what you would recommend for people wanting to get more into foreign movies. Like what's the more accessible movies that you would recommend for newcomers to the genre. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all things movies and TV. Do as well, click that little bell icon so you can stay notified every time that I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye.